Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Wall Street Raider Extra. I'm Rakem, your host. And today, we're going to look at doubling our money in the first few days of a game and then trying to run it up to about $100 billion within the first two weeks of a game. And the way this, uh, this works is you're going to take derated companies and you're going to turn them around, uh, buying them while their net worth is billions of dollars negative and turn them into billions of dollars positive. Uh, very simply and very easily. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new game. Uh, I'm going to de default two players. The computer will be one of the players. And I'm just going to leave all these defaults alone. One billion dollars to start, 35 year game, level three difficulty. Doesn't matter what difficulty you set this on. Uh, should work no matter what difficulty you got. And uh, it's going to randomize the database and then give us the um, the policy for the interest rate. And then we'll pause the ticker. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the game. And the reason why we're saving the game is because we have some research to do. But first, I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a database search. And we're going to look for companies whose maximum value is between 1 million and 100 million and that have bonds. Outstanding. Actually, let's make this 200 million. We don't have enough to choose from here. Uh, 300. Should be more than that. All right, let's go with no cap, I guess. How many D rated companies do we have? Really? That's all? All right. We might have to do a new game. Um, and by the way, what I'm going to show you here is uh, going to work no matter what game you play. Uh, but there is some randomization that I want to just show you. Uh, let's look at Fiat. So here we have a company with uh, 50 billion in assets and pretty much 50 billion in liabilities. Um, he's trading for 70 billion despite being negative. Okay. But what we're going to do is we're going to start a new game. And when we come back and look at Fiat, these numbers are going to be different. This is part of what is random in the game when it says it's randomizing the database. Uh, the biggest or the most easily identify, in, identifiable randomization is with the amount of debt that these companies are carrying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and restart because this game is no good. We want... We want one with lots of derated companies to choose from. Okay, all the defaults again. It's going to randomize the database. Now let's go look at Fiat. And he's got 57 billion in assets and 50 billion in liabilities and has a positive value. And he's only. 13, 14 billion instead of 70. All right, so this is the kind of randomization that is occurring when it starts up the database. So let's go and see how many D rated companies we have. All right, we got more than a full page now. So this gives us more to choose from. Because the more D rated companies there are, the better you have, or the, the more opportunities you have with this uh, particular strategy. So let's save our game again. Because we're going to do some research uh, when we get done here after I just show you initially what the strategy is. All right, so let's bring up our results. So let's go to a company. We want it, we want to be able to buy 100% of it. So it needs to be. I have a market cap of less than a billion dollars or less than two billion, I guess, if we want to borrow. But we're looking for a company that has a lot of bonds, but that are trading at a very low price. Okay, so um, let's see. And I, and I prefer, by the way, it's uh, helpful if it's an insurance company or a holding company that we know will own have, have ownership of some stocks. So let's look at Swire Pacific here. He's got 10 billion in cash, 12, 13 billion in bonds and five and a half billion in loans. 
right? And he also owns three billion in stock. So this one's gonna be kind of close, but uh, let's try it. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to buy 100% of Swire Pacific. All right, 93%, that's fine. And of course we'll take control of all the stocks that he owns. All right, now we're gonna to go to Swire Pacific. We're gonna pay off the loan. All right, so that leaves us with four and a half billion and we have 13 billion in bonds, but look how low they're trading. So we may be able to buy back all of these bonds with the cash that we have left, which if we do, will increase our net worth by about 8 billion. Okay, normally this is not allowed, but since doing so will uh, may actually improve the standing of the remaining bondholders, it's gonna allow it. Okay, so we can buy it back at this price or we can pay it off at this price and we want to hit no to buy back at, uh, buy back the publicly traded bonds on the open market. We don't wanna recall, we want to buy them back. So we're gonna hit no and we can afford the full amount. So we've bought them all back, $13 billion. We've bought it back for 4,600. Now, when we look at our value, we're positive. Okay, now we don't have a premium of any kind. So there's one of two things that we have to do. We either have to buy back or buy the rest of the uh, stock, the other 7% from uh, whoever it is that owns it or we have to issue new stock. And with the price this low, of course, we don't wanna do that. So the other thing that we can do to increase our bottom line is to actually sell off some of our stocks at a loss, right? So if we sell off some of these at a loss, like for instance, uh, Esprit Holdings here or BHP, let's do that one. Now that loss, we get a dollar to dollar uh, benefit on the taxes by selling that off at a loss. So now our taxes have been reduced and we're worth more money. Right, that one right there got us about 200 billion in additional value. Let's uh, sell this other one off, Esprit. Okay. And that one actually didn't didn't do us too much good on the taxes, but it did bring our value up another 200 billion. All right, so let's buy out the other stockholder here, give him some cash, and that should raise his stock price. We're gonna offer 25% above. And we're gonna give him 500 million. Okay, now his price is 762. It's still January 1st, but we've tripled our money. Now, we don't want to just try to sell that off because we own 100% and they'll make us take a discount on whatever amount. So what we have to do is we have to have Swire Pacific issue new SOC. So we go over here to public stock offering and 100, 100 million is fine. Okay, now his price is up to almost $9. And we can sell it off because we only own 80%. percent gain in one day. Okay, there you go. It's still January 1st. Now this is this can be repeated as many times as you have companies that will show a, uh, a profit from doing it. And um, if you wanna know the formula for figuring that out, here's how you do it. So let's go to our 
uh, database search. Here's the results back. And what you do is you go down here and what you're looking for is companies that have their bonds selling at 50% or less. So let's take for instance Toshiba here. Well, he's not a he's not a holding company, but and he doesn't have any cash. That's not going to work. Let's get another one here. Let's find one that might have some uh, stock. Uh, SoftBank maybe. Yeah, we can do SoftBank. All right, so let's buy SoftBank. All right, so the way that you analyze whether or not a company is going to make money for you doing this is you first look at what it's going to cost to buy the stock. And since I already bought it, let's just look at my tax cost basis. All right, so 1431 is what I spent. All right, this is SoftBank. All right, now SoftBank has everything else that you need comes off of this report. So he has 4847 in cash. He owns 6258 48 in stock. He has a loan of 137136. His face value bonds 8672. They're trading at 5835 a piece. So the 8 billion, 8.5 billion in bonds, we can buy it back for just over 5 billion, which gives us a net after all the expenses of 4,614. So we're going to take our 1431 and we're going to turn it into 4,614. All right. And the way we arrive at this is we just take this cost, add it to this cost and subtract the value of the bonds and the loan. And that's it. All right. So let's see if we can turn this into, we would have about uh, what, 8 billion when we get done. Right, so we'll, what we'll do is we'll have SoftBank pay off his loan. Okay, buy back his bonds. And this time we're going to hit yes to buy back off the open market. Okay, and looks like the rest of these are owned, so we'll have to buy them back separately. And now we can do this one of two ways. Well, if they were unowned, I, I would, let's see, it probably would have been better to buy those, buy those, uh, I'll, I'll show it to you on the next one. Hang on just a second. So let's buy back these bonds, uh, from the various holders. So yes, we're going to do that. We can afford this much. Let's do 3850. You want to bring it down just a little bit for fees. All right. So this company now has doubled in value. We can give him the other two billion or we can have him sell off some stock. So, so let's see if we can help have him sell off some stock at a loss. All right, Nintendo is one. And we don't want to sell that one off at a loss because it's not. So let's do this one. Okay, our value our Stocks have gone up in value, but our taxes have disappeared. So our value has gone up. Let's buy back the bonds. So we've bought all of our bonds back now and we're up over 3 billion. Now we can give him some cash and that will um, take care of moving his stock price up above this $15. So we're going to give him a billion dollars. All right, and now his stock price is $28.99. Okay, six billion. Let's pay off the loan. $28.88. We didn't quite, quite get us up to eight billion. Oh, 
Wait, wait, wait. We want to issue stock. Now we're getting close. All right, so we'll sell that off. Okay, so 6.6 .6 billion. And we can still go back and do it again. So let's take a look at Barnes and Noble. And he doesn't have any cash though. But what we can do, we can turn him around pretty quick actually. Uh, let's see if we can buy his, his bonds. And this is the other way to go about it. So let's gonna we're gonna buy the corporate bonds of Barnes and Noble, and now we're gonna buy Barnes and Noble stock. And what we're gonna do now is we are going to contribute his bonds to him. And as a result, the bonds disappear and he's worth 13 billion. Now we only spent, what was it, 6 billion on that? Plus uh, whatever it was that we spent on him for the stock. So a total of 82.17 is what we spent on him. I don't know. Let's try this again. We spent a total of 6,300 million, 6.3 billion, and he's now worth 21 and a half. Right? So let's have him issue a public stock offering. He just raised five and a half billion that he can put toward his loan, and now he's trading even higher. 500 and some dollars a share. And we only own 80%, so we can sell them off at a huge profit. Okay, and in that one, we didn't have to sell um, any of his stock off. We didn't have to pay off any of the loan because the bonds were trading so low that it was profitable and we had the cash to buy all of his bonds and just donate them to him. All right, and now it's, what, the 5th of January? We're up to 22 billion. So let's see, who else has them trading really low? So let's try USX. Okay, we can buy him for 150 million. We can buy his bonds real cheap. Okay, we own 100% of him, so we're just going to give him the bonds that we just bought. Now we'll have him issue a public stock offering. He raised five and a half billion. And uh, what, he's trading at 44. Okay, we're up to 40 billion and it's only the sixth. Let's see, who else has got a lot of bonds trading for a little bit of money? Uh, let's try Sony. Well, he's trading kind of high. Let's see. We would be buying these for about 18 billion. Let's just do the math here. So Sony and his market cap is 5200.4. Yeah, we would lose money on this one. 
Okay, 18 billion to cost for the bonds, and he just doesn't have enough to make up the difference. And most of it is here, and the loan is too big. He's got too much in uh, business assets, otherwise we would make money on it, but we would have to do some other massaging. So let's uh, let's look for a better one. All right, here we go. America Online. 42 billion and they're trading at $30 a piece. He's got no cash, but he also has no loan, which is good. And he got a lot of stock. So let's take a look at this one. This is AOL. Market cap is 1605. Okay, we can make a nice profit here. So let's buy the bonds to begin with. Got those for 14 billion. Now let's buy the stock. All right, so we spent 16 billion on this altogether so far. Now we're going to donate his bonds to him. And AOL is now worth 29 billion, right? He doesn't have any taxes, so I guess he had cast tax loss carryovers already. So we don't have to sell off any stock. So let's issue a public stock offering. And now he's trading at 777, we're up to 70 million, or billion, excuse me. All right, so that's pretty much how it goes. Uh, that's how it's done. The uh, the returns are just phenomenal and uh, really can't lose as long as you do your math ahead of time. So if you do this and you find that you're not making as much money as you should, the main thing to remember is that you can sell off stock for a, uh, a loss to alleviate some of the taxes that you have to pay on buying these bonds back. Now, if, if you buy them back personally and then donate, um, I'm not sure who gets the, uh, the, who has to pay the taxes on it. So like, let's go look at my financial report and see what my taxes are. All right. So I've made $66.5 billion and my estimated tax is $12 billion. So I don't think I'm the one that's paying those taxes. So if these companies end up with a large liability as, as far as uh, accrued taxes payable goes, just sell off some of their stock at a loss and that'll alleviate the problem at a dollar to dollar ratio. So for every dollar you lose selling off a stock, it'll come right out of the taxes. You don't actually lose any money. You, you get the full amount back from whatever the company spent on that investment. It's just that it doesn't come back in cash. It comes off of the tax, uh, off the tax bill. All right, but uh, that's it. Now we can keep going and uh, probably hit 100 billion, but I think you get the point. Um, we're already halfway and we're only seven days in. So when you uh, start your game, what you want to do is you want to uh, start a new game and then save it, then go do your research and then sort your list by your net uh, over here on the far right. Uh, from largest to smallest and just start hitting them one by one and um, in the first two weeks of the game these numbers won't fluctuate that much but after you've bought and sold a few you want to just double check that your numbers haven't changed any and if they have to plug the new numbers in before you actually buy somebody but uh, that's how you do it so that's it for today. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and share. And until next time, this is Rakem saying, have a good one.